Uh, as the good representative from District 94 and District 43 mentioned, uh, over the last many months, this has been a topic uh, of discussion. When it was first uh, discussed in this bill, in its first uh, iterations before it became a bill, was a discussion in regards to shutting down the system and paying down the debt. Uh, I've heard now a few of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle suggest that we are solving the long-term problem. And the answer is, if you have been told that, you have been misinformed. The $29 billion that is in the legacy program is not touched. That debt remains there. So what this bill does do is it creates a new plan within the hybrid. It's not a new hybrid. You've not closed down the old hybrid. What you're doing is creating a new plan under this existing hybrid. Now, when you take a look at that, you think that you have actually done something. But if we do know from ORS, as well as the state treasurer, the current hybrid system is fully funded. So what we are doing here today is making changes to something that is fully funded to say that we have done something to say that we have accomplished something. And then when I hear my colleagues on the other side of the aisle suggest that we are paying down the debt, that is a disservice to the community and the state to suggest that. That is wrong, and if you have been told that, you have been misinformed. The second thing, I've often heard uh, my colleague, uh, the good speaker, as we have went around to talk about pensions, talk about not wanting to take money out of the classrooms and that we could put money back in the classrooms. This plan does not do that. This plan actually takes money out of the classrooms. There are two components to it, one the 50-50 split and then the additional 401k benefit that you could have easily said the state of Michigan pays for straight out of the school aid fund, but within this bill it actually comes from the local district after they get their per pupil uh, funding. So if anyone has suggested to you that this is going to put more money back in the classroom, they have misinformed you. They are actually taking money out of the classroom. The third item you have is that you suggest that we still have a defined benefit program. We do not, because as of right now, the way your bill suggests is that there is a risk factor that employees take as part of their 50-50. That is not a defined benefit. I question the legality of that, and I also question the tax benefit that when a person has those types of resources, that they don't have to pay taxes on it. Now you will have teachers that will have tax implications. I'm sure we're going to have to see this in the courts. Again, if you would have capped this, if you would have had the state pick up all those costs, that would have been a true defined benefit. In committee that was asked for a legal opinion, and we still have not seen a legal opinion that suggests that this is there. So if you've been told that this is a defined benefit, I believe you have been misinformed. So the question is, why are we doing this? What are we actually accomplishing? You've already heard about the teacher shortages. This does not help this. This bill does not move that forward. I've heard my good colleague from the 94th District talk about Pennsylvania, but what he does not tell you about Pennsylvania and what they did is that those employees, when the fund does well, they share in that benefit. The program that you have just looked at, the one that you are going to be supporting, actually just gives all of the risk to the employee and doesn't give them any of the benefit. So don't be telling me about what happened in Pennsylvania when you don't even do the same things that Pennsylvania did here. So don't use that as an example. So all I can say is as we go forward on this, you have been misinformed. Many of you have talked about how you want to be supportive of teachers, how you want to be supporting our communities. What you have done now is taken money out of those classrooms. You have now not dealt with the long-term liability. And then I hear my good friend from the 43rd District talk about how no one in the current system in the hybrid will be impacted. In your language, you actually take away a woman or the spouse's ability to take parental leave. You are changing the hybrid system for an employee that's existing in the system. 
So again, when you go around suggesting that you have not impacted any current teacher in the system, you are misinformed and you are misleading people. Because now a teacher, if they wanted to have a child and use this towards their parental leave, they cannot. So you have impacted existing teachers. So once again, the talking points that are coming out of the majority are not truthful and they are not correct. And Mr. Speaker, as you're up there, I would have hoped that you would have tried to correct some of those things. Representative, please keep your comments tailored to the specifics of the bill. Thank you. The chair recognizes Minority Leader Singh. Thank you. And so today all I can guess as we move this forward is that you didn't want to deal with the long-term liability because you didn't do that today. You didn't want to deal with saying to people that I'm not going to impact your uh, current hybrid because you're going to go ahead and impact it and then maybe mislead them. And in the end, you're not going to solve any of the problems, but you're creating a new system just to say you actually did something. That is disappointing. And Mr. Speaker, we had asked for our constitutional right to have two record roll call votes, and you did not even provide that. Why won't you allow people the opportunity to actually have that? Representative, you're out of order. That is not the question that's before the House. Please keep your comments tailored to the merits of the bill that is before us. The chair recognizes Minority Leader Singh. Thank you. And last, I will say, did we have a plan? Yes. You have all heard me over and over again, whether it was with individual conversations, whether it was in the media, that we would be willing to look at the 401k and increase it. Teachers have been asking for that since this was created in 2012. We are willing to look at that. But we also said for us to come to the table and actually support this, you had to deal with the long-term liability. And you haven't done that. So today it's unfortunate that you are passing something so you can claim that you did something. But in the end, all you've done is dress something up and pretended like you solved a problem. I would hope that you go out there once we break for the summer and you don't mislead people on what you did. Let them know the truth because they deserve it. The clerk will tally, display, and announce the vote. Mr. Speaker, on the question of final passage of House Bill 4647, there are 55 I votes and 52 nay votes. A majority of the members elected and serving having voted therefore, the bill is passed.